Hey, I'm just gonna show you real quick how to adjust the uh, the uh, pan height on a foothold trap. What I have here is a little one and a half for coon. Now you can see with that trap, the pan's sticking up quite a bit above the trap. You want it to uh, lay flat. You don't you don't want nothing like that. So. I'm going to just bring it down, which is the hair trigger first of all. Okay, now that's all the further I can take it down. You can see it's still sticking up quite a bit right here. I'm going to show you how to adjust that. Now my trap was, uh, the pan was up quite a bit. I'm just going to take this ear here, here. Get a good grip on it. I'm going to bend it inwards. Not a whole lot. I'll set it again and see where we're at. All right, it doesn't take much. Just move it a little bit. You can see just pretty much flat right there. So if you want to lower your pan, just take this ear, with your pliers, bend it inwards. You lower your pan, or I'm sorry, raise your pan, bend it outwards. Well, there is two folks. Community season starts here in about three days in Illinois. Hope everybody's ready. Folks, when you find roadkill coons, there's a few things you can do with it. First of all, get it off the road. A uh, couple different reasons. Their coons are traveling there for a reason. That coon got killed there for a reason. There's a path there, there's something. It caused that coon to get hit right there. It's crossing the road right there. Get it off the road so other trappers don't see it. Then, get out, start looking around, do a little prospecting see why that coon was there find out if there's any way you can trap that area if there's one coon there's going to be more than one just find out why that coon is crossing the road find that trail see if you can trap that area third if that coon's good throw it in the back of your truck take it home and skin it you know it's all about selling fur sometimes you have to be uh, humble and pick up the roadkill but a big old coon right there, roadkill coon. Get it off the road so other trappers don't see it. Do some scouting and if you can, skin it out. I like to use these trap setters on these conibears. bears. You can do it with hand, but after a day of doing it, for sure feel it the next morning, they make it a lot easier. Simply press the springs, set the safety. Press the springs, set the safety. Going to be putting it here on this conner bear stake. Always like to have it in the second groove on this. The first groove of your trigger, it will not hold it. Get it in the notches here. safety. These things spring up on you, you're going to be in a world of trouble. Leave that safety on at all times until you're done. Traps in place, safety's on, triggers are in. First thing you're going to do is take your safety off. No moving it. Good to 
go. Unhook your triggers. That trap is ready to catch too. Okay, on this end of the trail, we're going to set a 160 corner bear inside this bucket. I like to use the square buckets on these 160s. They fit perfect in these 160s. These buckets. If I were to use a round bucket, there'd be too much free space for that trap. As far as bait goes, there's all kinds of options you have. Sometimes I've used chunks of old carp for my uh, bow fishing nights. Um, even muskrat carcass, mink carcass, list is endless. Tonight, all I'm going to use is some old dry cat food, some fish oil, and a couple drops of liquid smoke. I've already got the trap in place, wired onto the bucket. These square buckets really don't need much stabilization. They're not going to roll like a, a round bucket would. Set it on the first notch of your trigger. You want this to fire? First hint of a coon sticking its face into it. Get your safety in place. Drop a little bit of cat food into there. Fish oil. A couple drops of liquid smoke buy at the grocery store. buy these dropper caps about any place that sells trapping lures Thank you. safety off triggers off Just uh, give them a little appetizer. Should be a coon there tomorrow. We're on our way to go check that bucket set that uh, we put out yesterday. We also put out a 160 counter bear on that trail. Hopefully with two different sets, we'll be able to connect today and it won't be possums. Set the 160 in the trail yesterday, as you can see, connected on a big fat board tune here in the trail set. Over here we also set a bucket set. We had it baited with uh, just dry cat food, fish oil. As you can see, that's connected as well. Right there, this shows you the importance of having at least two sets at each location. Coons often travel in pairs, if not family groups. Prime example, right? All right, I got Coon traveling this little ditch here uh, a lot. Tracks everywhere, scat everywhere. I'm going to show you a real simple, quick, easy set with a foothold. Folks, this set's real simple, quick, and easy to make. I'm just going to take my stake that I'm going to trap, or uh, take my trap down with. I'm going to make it full in the bank here. I'm going to take a can of sardines. I'm going to stuff some sardines in that hole. Get, got one and a half here. Pretty much you're going to set right here in this trail, right in the middle. Bed it in there solid as I can. Take it away from 
the bank. I don't want the coons to come up here and tear up the bank. There's a lot of rock in that. I'm not even going to take that down all the way. They're not going to pull that out. Go ahead. Ready the chain under the sand. Otherwise, coons are just going to fill that with their paws, pull it up. I'm going to stick down the bank here. And take some fish oil. Goons will come to investigate that hole. We're going to be walking through this water. They'll stop and investigate that hole, play around that. They're going to step on that trap, get caught. Hey folks, I'm going to make a uh, pocket set here for a uh, mink, coon, hopefully coon. Uh, mink would be great too. Uh, there's not a lot of mink in the area, but I am seeing a few tracks here. Go ahead and make a pocket set and see what happens. Okay, I'm just going to dig a little pocket bank here. Pocket set here for a mink and coon. They're both traveling. Mink will investigate any little hole they can find. I want to dig it in there pretty good. I'm going to dig a little shelf here for my bait. Now I'm not going to place my trap right here in the hole. I'm going to set it off to either side because the animals are just going to walk the edge and kind of look into the hole. So I set it right here. I'm just going to use the number one and a half coil spring. I'm really hoping to catch a uh, mink here. A lot of mink sign. I want to stake my trap just out here in this little bit of deeper water. So they won't be able to tear up the bank as well. Pretty soft, but it'll hold a coon or a mink. Go ahead and kind of smash my chain down. Coon will feel that chain and pull on it. I got some mink and coon lure bait here from Cavens. Really performs well for me. Dig it back here in that hole. Take fish oil, put it all around here. That's it to the pocket set, folks. Hopefully a coon or a mink will find that. All right, it's been a couple of days since I set this pocket set, and the result is a big buck mink here. Nice 
nice mink. We'll go ahead, we'll reset this trap. Maybe we'll catch another mink or a coon. Folks, here I'm going to set a one and a half duke. Pretty much right in the trail here. You know, I've already got two traps set here. I'm going to set a third one. People ask me all the time, don't you think you set too many traps in one area? No. Coons travel in families. I mean, a lot of times there'll be four or five coons together. If you can set three traps out, catch three coon, which I do a lot. Two or three nights of catching coon, pick up, move to a fresh spot. It's just, why set out one trap when you got ten coon? That don't make sense to me. But I'm gonna make a little PVC set here. So I don't even know where I learned this. Maybe I made it up. I don't know. Doubt it. But this is, you know, catches a lot of coon as well. Make a little trap bed. there in the trail one and a half in there they blight it good them rocks, you don't always get your steak back. So all the further she's going. Now I'm not going to worry a lot about perfect covered up on this, sifting dirt and what have you. It's, you know, it's some grass is already in the area. Make it look natural. Coons are dumb. I'm just going to say right now, sorry coons, but you're done. After that, I'm going to take my PVC pipe, spin out a 45 degree angle with the tip of it right over the pan of that trap, the edge of it, coming right down on top of the trap pan. Bathroom cups I talked to you about. Put her in there. I like him to be snug. When a coon gets on his back legs, gets his paw in there, pushes that down, you know, and he's still going to be in there working it. The longer he's working a set, better your odds are of him getting caught. It's going to do all sweet on this one. Marshmallows in there. Get hungry on the trap line. Don't tell my wife I did that. This is a sweet lure here. I believe this is a persimmon. Humans love persimmon, of course. Them marshmallows off the trap. You don't want to to get caught by the head. Now it's okay to put some on the trail though, but not on top of the trap. And even though I did do most of that sweet, I'm still gonna put some fish oil out here. You know, nothing beats fish oil. There you have it, folks. That's the PVC set. Not too hard either. Come on.